You know, yesterday I picked up both of my daughters and we went to get some toys to do some early kind of uh, holiday shopping because of all the supply issues. And I was thinking about how we've had a lot of trouble finding the right nanny. I was like, why don't I hire myself? We are one of the few firms in the country that has had the experience of actually using the H-2B visa to get nannies to come to the United States for families and to use H-2B visas to bring caregivers into family homes, for example, when you have convalescent or elderly family members. There is a lack of knowledge about how to do this with the H-2B visa because it's seen as a seasonal temporary worker visa, but it's actually a temporary worker visa and there's a category that we can use to bring in nannies and caregivers. If you wanna learn how to do that, then stick around. Hey everybody, this is Law Great. My name is Damien DeNoble. This is the channel where I give you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes on your immigration journey. And we also do a lot of H2B visa videos. Uh, if you like this content, please go ahead and like, hit some comments. It really helps me out. It gets this content out to other people who need to see it. Okay. Today I'm telling you about the H2B visa and how it can be used to bring in a nanny or a caregiver. Uh, there are four categories of H2B visa under which they can be filed for. Seasonal, peak load, intermittent, and one time. Nannies and caregivers are not seasonal workers. Uh, they don't fit under the peak load category and they don't really fit under inter intermittent. So what needs to be used to bring in nannies or caregivers is the one time category. Typically for young children, uh, for newborns, let's say zero to three, uh, you can use a one time argument that goes something like this. Um, I'm a single, I'm a parent who works. My partner, if there is one, also works. They can't help with um, caregiving duties. I need to go back to work. I can't find a nanny. I would like to use this program to bring somebody in for a year up to three years. This sort of argument needs to be sorted by, supported by evidence. Uh, we often uh, look at every aspect of an applicant's life, but it can be done under a one-time category. And the idea here is that, hey, this baby's going to be young once, you're gonna be in the period of life you are currently once, and so there is a one-time need for a nanny. Similarly for a caregiver, uh, you know, when somebody is, when somebody is uh, sick or convalescent or elderly, the big hurdle that you have to pass with the one-time occurrence is showing why it's one time. Like, why isn't this a position that needs to be filled for the next 10 years? We've had luck showing that when somebody is, um, let's say on a downward trajectory where it's unclear how long they're gonna be with us, whether it's one year, two years, three years, uh, we can use that argument to establish a one-time need for caregiving that's going to have a definite end. So if you think about it, for nannies, the one-time occurrence is the fact that a baby's been born, for the elderly and convalescent, it's a little dark, but the one-time argument is that somebody is, looks like they're on a downward trajectory where maybe they will you know, leave this earth uh, within the period of the visa. It's not easy to do. There's not a lot of nanny and caregiver uh, certifications for the H2B visa done every year, but it is possible and we've done it. It's in the record. So if this is something that you want help with, we are happy to help. Uh, you might be wondering, well, can I do this myself? You can try, but here's a word of warning. Because these visas are atypical for the H-2B program, it takes a lot of back and forth, especially the first time, with the certifying officers that you're dealing with at the Department of Labor and then at the USCIS to get it right. And so it's something that can take, you know, one, two cycles to get through and get, and you still have to, depending on the cycle, you know, deal with the timing issues. But it is possible. I know people search for it. There's no information about it. So this is why I'm telling you. So again, H2B visa for nannies and caregivers, one time, use the one time occurrence category. And you really have to kind of show how the birth or the potential, you know, as hard as to say, the death of somebody that you're caring for creates this one time need. So if you find that helpful, we do have other H2B visa videos that talk about the process as a whole. This is just kind of a niche little explanation for how the H2B visas can be used for nanny and caregivers. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, that's it for now. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.